after a while. <clears throat> Are you Hello. situated? Are you situated? Children of all ages. It has been a hiatus this time, but we are back. It's been Tyler, two months. Tyler, Brooke, uh, Rodin, this is stab shit to talk about. We've been on hiatus for a few months, but hey, that's okay. Everybody's got a life. These are bad times we're living in right now. So everything is accounted for when it comes to hiatuses as of this point in anybody's case. Yeah, two month hiatus to be precise. And got some shit to talk about, boy. Let me tell you. Hold up. So but, we're, uh, we're doing we're doing we a stab. Before we get to any breaking news, uh, let's uh, hand it over to our uh, news correspondent to my left or my right. I don't know which side he's on. To uh, the time warp, the hourglass, Tyler. Well. Uh, we're doing a stab? I thought we were doing a wrestling with time. That's fine. We could do a stab. I just don't know what episode of stab we're on. We could go back in the archives above. Well, this is episode I would assume to be 15 or 16 of stab. I was ready for episode 20 of wrestling with time. But. That's all right. I'm throwing a stab out there because uh, this is a little more important. The people need to know what's going on. They're going to know what's going on. I came razor Ramon ready. For wrestling with time though <laughs> but we could do we could do a fucking stab too um yeah what, what did you really want to talk about i wasn't even ready for world topics i don't fucking watch the news you know i don't do none of that shit oh well then that's why you have me you have the most in-depth news person around so first of all this weekend that just passed i went to pa to go see donald trump our greatest president probably ever Ever, 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 ever. You know, he's a very good man. Very good man. But I don't know. Joe Biden, Joe Biden's done some very fucked up shit for our country. It's very fucked up. But our country's going to hell. We're going to hell. And we're taking the hand basket with us, folks. It's not looking too good. Next is the kitchen sink, and then we're all gone. We're already there. We're Joe already there. Biden. On Thursday, on September 1st, did a speech calling regular Republicans, whether you voted for Trump or not, as a Republican, he called you a domestic terrorist. He said, you are an enemy of the state, and he said that you are a threat to their democracy, democracy societal society. Is this the same Joe Biden we saw with the Hitler-like background? Is this is the same Joe Biden. Ironically, okay, now I don't know how ironic it is, but it sure seems a little played. Um, Adolf Hitler gave the Nuremberg rally speech September 1st, 1933. Joe Biden gave the Republicans are an enemy of the state speech September 1st, 2022. The same day he told Germany that Jews are bad. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It just looks scary. I know there's a lot of conspiracies out there and a lot of uh, talk about... The one conspiracy that everybody could put to rest is, did Hitler really do a speech like this all the way back then? Yes, he did. September 1st, 1933. That, Joe Biden mimicked the same speech but put Republicans in it and made any Republican that didn't even vote for Trump. You're an enemy of the state. I didn't even think you it was a question a that uh, you are a threat. I didn't think it was a question that Hitler had given a speech like that. I think we all knew that he had given a speech like that. Well, I mean, most of us know if you have a brain. If you, if you had a good education, yeah. Study history. I don't know why you keep popping in my ear, though. I'm hearing like a pop sound. I don't know. Maybe it's just my voice. My voice is a little raspy. Allergies are fucking no, kicking no. in I this mean, year. I mean, I, I think I need to get a new... Uh, I probably need to get a new... Um... There's a reason why I'm not using a headset because my fucking headset jack on my phone fucking broke. I don't know how. Hold on. I think it's this fucking cord that I have, this uh, auxiliary cord. Let me talk a minute. Let me hear if I hear you. <coughs> but uh, I, think, I think it's good now. I don't know. Fuck it. If you're hearing a pop, I apologize. It's been a while since we've done this. It, it, it my is, machine is, probably has fucking... My machine probably has fucking dust in its ass. 
Fucking... Go to Walmart, pick yourself up two cans of Surf On air spray. That's right, Surf On air spray. You put a you put a little straw inside the hole. And fucking, you can clean all your dust out of all your electronics and they'll, they'll never, ever break. Surf on. It's not a sponsor, but I swear by it. So if you want to go do some whippets later, kids. Surfboard. Have- Surfboard. TikTok trends, all that shit. But um, yeah, so you, you, sponsor, you went. I, I, I did see. Love, and they fucking clean my electronics out great. Even my Xbox. Yeah, I, I did see you went there this weekend. Um, you had pretty good seats. You were like right over his right shoulder. I will. I sent you the video. I sent you the video. So whenever you get a chance, you throw the video out before, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm saying freaking you were like right over his right hand shoulder. I mean, that's pretty good seats. Yes. I had really good seats. It was a great fucking rally. Uh, I did invite you, of course, but you didn't respond until the day before saying, Fuck it, I want to go. And it's like, I already got somebody to go with me. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, yeah, dude. I, I I, didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, you know what? I was sitting in my fucking hammock the reading a book. And I was like, like, you know I what? I would love to see Trump. That would be great. I just figured I was like, go out and do something. I haven't been to a fucking concert in fucking three years, four years. I haven't done fucking anything in a couple years since this whole COVID scamdemic. So I figured, what the fuck? Yeah. But actually, I did, I did go to a concert. I did see... Um, <laughs> It was awesome. The only gripe I had was that I had to stand online for four and a half fucking hours to get into the building. When you texted that was me, the only gripe I had. yeah, that, that 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 makes sense though. When you texted me though, I I could or you tried calling me, I couldn't hear you. I was at Max Weinberg at the State Fair, who's Billy Joel's fucking drummer from the East Street Band or something like that. I think it's called, and he did a lot of hits. You know, he did like you sure that's Billy Joel. Uh, and not, not the boss, not, yeah, man. Not, boss, not Billy Joel. Crazy. Yeah, why did I say Billy Joel? Fucking the boss. Yeah, fucking. Not the boss. Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, it was it was his um. Donald Trump and hates America. His drummer. We, we were supposed to see uh. Right. Reason we were there though, we were supposed to see Boys to Men was coming on at eight o'clock, and then uh, we got rained out, thunderstormed out, so we didn't get to see Boys to Men. Although I would have oh, loved shit. to see Boys to Men. Oh wow, you actually almost got to see Boys to Men. That's actually pretty fucking dope. What? Yo, we 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 would have, but I was with my job and the seniors, so like it, it started like. But if you want, to, uh, folks, if you want to see Boys to Men, you just watch all their commercials on TV. It, 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 it's it's. It's pretty much the same thing. They play the same songs on their commercials as they would, at, uh, you know, at the concert. So, yeah, it was it was it was dope. It was just, uh, you know, we got rained out, thunderstormed out, and I think I fixed the uh, pop sound. Awesome. I think I fixed the pop sound. I think my AC was on. That was causing the pop. Boys to Men, yo. It, Maybe I'm wrong. It's if still I was popping. able to see Boys to Men, that would actually be a pretty good damn concert. Yeah, I mean, half of them wanted to stay still because they thought the rain was over, but half of them wanted to leave. And when you got a van full of senior citizens, you kind of just put it up for a vote, you know, like, yeah. like you guys want to stay. I don't want to force you guys to leave if that's really what you came for. But at the same time, you know, like the consensus is uh, let's get out of here. We already turned in our chairs and stuff, and we're not going to wait online to get new chairs and totally understandable. That's another thing. Let's if you want to go here. to a Trump rally and you got to sit outside. Go to the nearest Walmart and pick yourself up a fucking cheap ten dollar chair so you can sit your ass in line. Half the people were were sitting in chairs, and I was like, "What the fuck?" And yeah. they were like, yeah, "Yeah, everybody goes to these rallies. They fucking bring a chair because you got to sit in line." Get yourself like, I was one like of those fuck, little, that's actually an idea. Little hunting stools, even just a little fold out thing. You sit on it, you hold it in your fucking yeah, exactly. Hand. Go to Walmart, yeah. pick yourself up a shitty ten dollar chair, yeah, and you can leave it there. The fucking it, it, they'll they'll either throw it out or you bring it with you when you go home. For those that don't know, this is uh, day number 10 with no drinks. Therefore, I got my circle bottle here. It's beautiful. So it comes with uh, vodka. No, it comes with these flavors. <laughs> Mocha iced coffee caffeinated like beverage vodka. mix. It's clear. It looks like vodka, but it's water. And it tastes like coffee. Or this one is mixed berry. They sell different uh, That's what he's saying, flavors. folks. He's in denial. We're nowhere. We are nowhere near sober October yet, so I don't understand what he's talking about. This was vodka, and I just drank this vodka already. I'd be on the show. <laughs> fucking <laughs> falling asleep. But uh, it feels good. 
feels good, man. I don't know. I feel I feel good. I'm just rebuilding my confidence. It's crazy because not this podcast, but, but when I started Our Time Is Now, I was sober. And I think the first episode that I drank on for us was Wrestling With Time 1 when I cracked the Steve Weiser Broken Skull IPA at my grandma's house when we shot episode one for Wrestling With Time. And that was uh, like the beginning of the cycle starting over again. So it's nice to... Uh, <laughs> Get off that wave again. <laughs> Get off the wave, man. I haven't had a beer in three years. That's good. That's good. I haven't had an alcoholic drink <laughs> since 2019. You haven't been clawed up? You didn't drink a claw at all? No claws? <laughs> Why not? No, I, I honestly think those things are nasty. You didn't want to get white girl wasted? <laughs> nah, I don't want to drink no chick drink. Hey, man, it's not a chick drink necessarily, per se. It, 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 dude, I see more chicks drinking it than dudes. And it, and, yeah, and, it is a chick drink. I, I'm, I'm fucking any dude it started drink off it. a chick drink. Oh, you're gay? But that's okay. I ain't got nothing wrong with gay people. You know? That's so, not true. I was drinking I'm, them motherfuckers. When I, I, when I got I back... That a seltzer like that is typically for women and... No, Jeez. no, no, not necessarily. When I fell off the wagon, I was <laughs> using my alcoholic. If you drink it, you're a fucking pussy. If you drink it, you're a pussy because okay. you can't handle right. your regular right. fucking weed and alcohol. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, your weed and alcohol. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. No, when I fell off the wagon, I was drinking that shit, and my alcoholic <laughs> rationalization was, well, it's not even a beer, so I'm actually not even cheating because I'm actually hydrating while I'm actually getting drunk at the same time. How how about this? They make a zero percent alcohol Heineken. You fucking drink that. That's what I. That's what I was drinking when I was when I quit drinking. I went, I hate Heineken like a motherfucker. But when I was going to parties, just so I could kind of blend in and not feel like that. Oh, I don't drink. I don't drink, and I'm the only asshole without a fucking thing in my hand. I did buy those, so at least I could socialize and sit there and be like, oh, okay. And being an alcoholic, that shit helped a lot. It just sucked. I hated Heineken, but there's other non-alcoholic beers out there too. But yeah, but Heineken was the first one to actually do it. No, it wasn't the first one. They they were the most recent one to do it. I think Joe Rogan started promoting Heineken them like been doing two years this ago. since like 2018. Yeah, I know, but there, there's been non-alcoholic beers long before that, bro. Long before. Never that. seen one. Yeah, uh, Courtney's dad used to uh, when I used to go over there. He'd have, and that was like 2012, 2011. He had non-alcoholic beers in his fridge, so I know they've been around. You, for a while. you, you want to know what it is? I don't drink, so when I just see it on the commercials, like, oh shit, that's brand new. It's like I never fucking saw that in my life, not even in a beer. Some, some people just like the beer flavor. Beer. It's not going to sell a fucking non-alcoholic yeah, beer. I don't think so. I, I don't. I think you get them at like Walmart or like some superstore, supermarket. You see, even shit. at Walmart, I don't see shit like that. The only shit I would see is Heineken Zero, which is no yeah, alcohol. Yeah. Which, I mean, and it's if, if you love the taste of beer. Zero. It's got no alcohol. Yeah, well, it has like less than 0.001% or less than 0.01% or some shit. Or maybe maybe it, Heineken it, it, has zero. It, it, but... it pretty much has no alcohol yeah. to where that you can't get fucked up off of two. Heineken might have, well, you can't get fucked off of any of them because you'd have to drink like like a fucking barrel load in order to You would have to drink a buzz. whole like 12 pack. Yeah, and you'd probably piss it out by the time you actually got drunk off it. But, uh, there, I remember like the old alcoholic, the non-alcoholic beers. I think they were like contains less than 0.01% or some shit, which is like not even a, a hundredth of a percent. Which very, very little hops in it and that's it. Yeah, I think it's just like because it was like fermented or some shit. I don't really know. I never really drank them. That's the whole thing. Like Kind of like, like said, root beer almost. It Kind of like root beer. Root beer started off as an alcoholic drink. Then they knocked the alcohol out of it. Yeah, I couldn't stand Heineken. That's the whole thing. I, so like it was like. Damn, Heineken had to go fucking zero. Why couldn't they just make Budweiser zero or some shit? I could do a funnel and pretend. But I mean, like the part of drinking that's fun is getting fucked up. That's that's the whole thing is is getting fucked uh, up. Uh, you see, nobody I wants to be like, I'll go out tonight and have a beer for my dinner. Like the flavor's good. I've had my fair share of drinking. Uh, I did a lot of my drinking in the strip club. A lot of it. I mean, a lot of it. I was fucking doing fucking shots of Grey Goose, yeah. fucking shots of fucking Patron. He was at that fucking... forbidden fruit, getting that fruit that's forbidden. No, no, no. Not a forbidden fruit. <laughs> I was at a much classier joint what, what with is much it more sexier now? women. Yeah, what is it called now? The Landing Strip? It's called The Landing Strip now, but I used to go to a place in Comac called Blush, 
And when yeah, I used I to go Lush. there at the time, there were some still really there. sexy fucking girls working there. Lush Pub is still there, I think. Lush right? is still there. Lush is still there. It's still owned by the same owner, and it's still ran by the same manager. Fucking crazy. Good money in that motherfucker. I have, I have the manager's fucking phone number in my cell. You should get a That's job. That's how there. close I am with the manager. I used to go there all the time. You should be like, I'll be the roadblock kicking everybody out, motherfucker. No, um, let's just say when I was a derelict, I used to do a lot of business in that place. Speaking of Roadblock, I was watching an old WCW event recently, and Roadblock was wrestling the giant. I think it was Roadblock. And I was like, whoa. I haven't seen that motherfucker in a minute, but, you know, I forgot he was even a wrestler until watching WCW. But um, Oh, since you brought up wrestling. Guess who just uh, guess who returned Friday night in a small little cameo, and I think he's going to be uh, Baron Corbin's manager. Who? JBL Longhorns. Oh, you went like this? Like I was like, I'm supposed to know who the fuck this is. No, or... I went like this. Longhorns. You, you should have did like horns, like. Oh. When JBL, no. When JBL and Orlando Coming Jordan, out. when oh, he used yeah. to have the cabinet, the stance would be like this for yeah. JBL and Orlando Jordan for the Longhorns. This used to be the call when JBL was the prick, fucking multimillionaire, fucking New York City, moved from yeah. Texas and everything. Yeah. This was the signal, you know, the Longhorns was the signal for the clothesline from hell besides this. Whenever JBL did this, you knew the clothesline from hell was coming. But originally, he used to do this before you got up, and then he would hit it. Yeah. So the Longhorns pull up in this brand new, like, 2022 BMW limo. And the window rolls down. No face. All you hear is his voice. He goes, the hell's been going on with you? Get in. And then they just drive away. And I was like, JBL's going to be his manager. It's like, that'll be fucking awesome. Yeah. Hunter's been going, bro. Hunter's been going. Oh, and in. Triple H is, has been fucking killing it since day one of being in control. Which we will talk about on Wrestling With Time. He brought the ratings up Whoa. 29% from the past six months. Yeah. Oh, is now drawing over 2.4 million viewers now a week. And they haven't done that since 2016. Yeah, well, look who's in charge. The game. He's going to win. H, it was the best fucking idea to let him run the company. He really was. He was the best idea. Yeah. That's Triple a H runs Triple H runs Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Creative. Shawn Michaels is the head of creative for NXT. Yeah, which I like before like what I was watching before when I was on with you was uh when worlds collide, right? That's a Shawn Michaels show. Shawn Michaels wrote and produced that whole show. Yeah, worlds collide. And uh, let me tell See, you, Michaels, Mandy, baby. Mandy, Mandy, no, Mandy. God bless America, Triple Mandy H Rose. Triple H created it, got it to where it was. Vince took over, fucked it all up. Trips comes back in full time around to run the whole company while his wife does the business and he does the whole show aspect, which is smart. Mm -hmm. And he's like this. All right, Bruce Pritchard, you're going to be head of talent relations and I'm going to run creative. So now you don't have to deal with creative no more. You could deal with all the talent. Piece Fucking shit. A, man. Sean, you're getting promoted. You are now the head writer and the head producer of NXT. NXT is now your show. Which, let me tell you, there was Ricochet and um, this other guy in the first match. I can't think of his name right now. And it was probably, it set the night off. It was probably like match of the night so far. I can't think of the guy's name. I feel bad, but I don't really watch I NXT, so I don't know. What they do for the Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble is going to be so fucking cool. The number 30 adventure is going to be Cody Rhodes. Yeah. And I think the whole reason why, now that a lot of shit makes sense and a lot of wrestling shows like Cultaholic, What Culture, uh, Wrestle Talk are starting to put together all the pieces and all their podcasts, they're all saying that, you know, isn't it weird that Cody came back right before Triple H took control of the company? 
Maybe, maybe and they, they were, had a sense that it was going. And they were doing great with Cody Rhodes as Vince running him. Yeah. That wasn't Vince. That was Triple H. Yeah. Triple H has his head baby face ready to win the title. And it's going to be Cody fucking Rhodes. Yeah. It's going to be Cody fucking Rhodes. I'm saying. Cody Rhodes will be the one to, to stop Roman Reigns, if not at least win one championship. Yeah. Because if you could take one title off for of Roman, you could still have Rock. You could still have the Rock versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 39 in Hollywood. You could still do that. But at this point, you don't need the titles on Roman in order to do that match. You don't. Yeah, it makes sense, though. I was actually watching Triple H and Batista at the beginning of the like, rivalry. Honestly, like if you wanted to do an all out main event with The Rock and Roman Reigns headlining it without the title, this is what I would do. It would be a three on three tag team match. Roman Reigns with Naomi and Jay Uso or Jimmy Uso, whoever Naomi's husband is, because Naomi and Sasha Banks are coming back. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm sorry, four on four, four on four, because this makes it more interesting. Roman Reigns with the Usos and Naomi versus The Rock with his daughter, Rikishi, and, uh, well, Umaga's passed, so uh, I guess we could put... um, Solo Sokoa. No, Solo Sokoa. Actually, we could do that. We could actually turn Solo Sokoa on Reigns and put him with his father, Rikishi, to fight on the Rock side. Because now that's how you make the next breakout star throughout the Rock's family would be Solo Secura. He would be the next breakout star. And for him to get the win on Reigns that night would be the biggest thing for his career. It was kind of funny. We'll get into it at the, uh, on the on the next Wrestling With Time, but I just figured out this is actually Stab episode 15 for those that don't know. I figured it was 15. I remember like I remember what happened was we, we did do a Stab 15, which I don't even remember what it was about. It was pre-summer, so it was like maybe the beginning of July. Uh, I don't know if that's right after your grandma passed. I don't remember what episode we were doing when, when it was, it was the day that she did pass. Yeah. So, I mean, I never actually put that episode out. That might be like some bonus content down the line, but that would have been the episode where we initially introduced Buff Bagwell, the, the little introduction. But since we're here now, I mean, we could fucking do the Buff Daddy. Cause the last episode we had was the redemption episode. It was the night. After I was really drunk at my grandma's and lost my grandma. And uh, it was like about forest bathing, abortion, uh, Nick's Lincoln Dewey fucking in front of the old crib. And then, yes, more buff, buff daddy banged your mom. And for episode 15, well, I'll take I was going to what introduce... I've heard. TDP came out and said that Buff Bagwell's doing a lot better now. So yeah, he, it look it looks like he's doing good. TDP but... ended up, I guess, taking over Buff Bagwell and uh, started to help him like he did with Jake and Scott. Who did it? Oh, DDP. Well, DDP's been been yeah, with DDP, Buff though for a while. DDP came out with a video three days ago talking about him, saying that he's going to help him and. He's gonna go into his care, and he's gonna re- and he's gonna rehabilitate well, him like he did with Scott. He was helping him though for a while though, but um, I think that uh, yeah. But now it's a little more. It's yeah. a little more now. You know, we're gonna focus on you because Jake's doing really well. Everybody else is doing really well. Now you're the next one who has. You're the next one we have to focus on. Yeah, but I'm gonna actually put the um, the buff fucking video right here anyway, just for people to see it. We got our little intro here. Oh, uh, my um, my Twitter bestie, Dave Landau from over at louderwithcrowder.com. He will be on tour this fall. Uh, I have to give him a quick shout out because uh, he is my Twitter bestie. And yeah, uh, yeah I, I promote all his shit, uh, whether <laughs> it's on Twitter or anything else. Um, <clears throat> Dave Landau will be at Red Bank, New Jersey, December 2nd. The only time that him and Steven Crowder will be anywhere in the East Coast. In New York, New Jersey borderline. Get your tickets today. 
Yeah, I know. I'll be going. going. You'll be going. I know. Dave Landau was one of my besties, and I, 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 I already have fucking VIP tickets, so I get to go meet him backstage. I knew you were going to get those as soon as they became available, but hold on. Let's... I wanted those because Dave, it. It, it, me and Dave Landau talk I, almost every other day on Twitter. Did you ever get back into your wrestling with time Twitter? I have all the information. I just never did it yet. All right. Well, that, at least at least that's one step in the right direction. I have I have all the information. All right. uh, Twitter did lock me out of Dr. Fauci from his garage for a week. He was talking shit. Uh, here's the story, if uh, anybody gives a shit. Um, <clears throat> D. Schneider from uh, Twisted Sister opened up his mouth and uh, said something. He says, um, all you fuckers at a Trump rally are screaming, we're not going to take it. Just remember, it was a fucking 22-year-old man with fake tits and a dress and wore, wore makeup in order in order to let you guys to sing that song. So I was like, listen here, you fucking... Listen here. I can't remember it's exactly 2022 the and I you're said, allowed to have I, fake tits in a man dress, but you can have real tits I now. Can, <laughs> I can... Uh, I don't remember the whole conversation. It was a paragraph long, but I'm going to probably paraphrase it. I should have take I should have taken a snapshot of it. Uh, I said, you make Long Island. You, I was like, you know, from what I remember is that you're from Long Island. You're a piece of shit. And not for nothing, your band wouldn't be as successful as it was if you didn't do what you did. Because I've heard stories of when my mom used to see you guys at Sundance which used to be the crazy donkey, all right? Mm. When you guys weren't even called Twisted Sister, you guys were called another band, and you used to open for Randy Jackson's Zebra, which is another Long Island band. Yeah. By the way, um, you used to open for Randy Jackson, and you guys used to get booed off stage. So how about you shut the fuck up, you no-talent motherfucker? Because <laughs> you got lucky because you had a certain audience that liked your music. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, and I even and I even said I was like, and for your information, I'm 31 years old, and I know exactly what the fuck Sundance is. And guess what? My mom saw every single fucking great band like you guys before they made it huge. It was like it was like Randy Jackson and Zebra was already huge at that point. Yeah, they were already. Good. I didn't realize they were from Long Island too. I didn't realize how much musical talent yeah. came out of Long Island. Yeah. Twisted Sister came out of Long Island. Blue Oyster Cult came out of Long Island. Zebra came out of Long Island. Um, two members of Cinderella came out in Long Island, but but like Brooklyn, Queens almost. All right. Uh, shit, I could fucking think of a uh, fucking dumbass fucking uh, racist motherfucker, uh, R.A., the fucking rapper, whatever his name is. R.A., R. A. Rugged, rugged Man. man. He ain't racist. He's not He's racist. He's a fucking asshole. He's an asshole. He's, He's an asshole. He proved it. He proved he was a racist on Tim Cast IRL eight months ago. They asked him a question. He gave him a racist answer, and they called him out on his bullshit, and he wanted to fucking knock everybody out, and he wouldn't have stand a chance because that fucking place is fucking guns, and he would not have fucking walked out of there nicely. He would have been oh. escorted out with a fucking gun rifle to the back of his head. All right. He would have walked in that bitch and been like, back in his day. Every 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 news fucking label sucks dick. fucking piece of shit. He's a racist piece of shit. You give one answer, they ask you a simple answer, and you give the most racist answer out of all of them, and all six people sitting at that table, and they're all left. They're all center left to where that they believe in, you know, the left's ideology, but they're kind of like the moderate left, which is pretty much Republicanism today. They believe that Twisted Sisters they, they drummer guy or whatever could be a Twisted Sister. Six people heard the same fucking answer from the same question, and all six of them said, that's fucking racist. Mm -hmm. And he got mad defensive when he said, I'm not no fucking racist and everything. And, 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 and when you get defensive like that, that's because you just lied and now you're trying to cover up your fucking lie. And what, what is that on Tim Cass? Right, man, a fucking racist. Tim Cass, you said? Tim Cass IRL. The episode was pulled down because of that whole fucking 15 minute fight. They yeah. almost got into a fist fight live on air. I'm sure because already the somewhere. rubber band was getting in Tim Pool's face. It's somewhere on the internet. The internet has that somewhere. Yeah, I know, but YouTube pulled it down. But if you could find the clip, it's a 15 minute clip. They all ask Tim Pool asks him one question, and when he answers it, 
Everybody at the table, the seven people at that table, all six people look at him and said that was a racist answer. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm not the fucking racist. And he, get, and he gets in Tim Pool's face. Yeah. He got so defensive because he was proven wrong. Somebody called him a racist and he realized, oh shit, what I said was racist. Let me defend myself. And he would have knocked everybody out in there. Meanwhile, he wouldn't have walked away out of that building. Yeah. He wouldn't have. I wanted to say- He would have been escorted out by their personal security or if not, the cops would have been called and he would have been arrested and it would have made the news. I wanted to say though, I was before- we got on and here. It would be racist. And, and and just for people, just so you know, Tim Pool is not white. He's Asian. He's Asian mixed with white, so he's technically Asian. Hmm. All right. So he's not he's not white. He's Asian. So if you were to hit an Asian, that's a hate crime. <laughs> oh, get the fuck out of here. Racist motherfucker. But um I was going to say, uh, I was in the, um, I was taking a shower earlier and I was watching Steve O's new podcast with Patty Limbo, Lim- Lambert. I didn't see that episode. I saw Wild Ride with um, Johnny Knoxville. I saw Wild Ride with Ari Shafir, which is funny. I watched a lot of them too. I like the one with I Kevin seen Smith. I the one with um, Bert, uh, oh, what's Kreischer? his last name? Fucking- Kreischer. Fucking Literally. funny fat motherfucker he is. He's a yeah. funny fat Always motherfucker. Always drunk all funny. the time. But uh, the one that yeah. helped, I was I was in the shower like a little bit over a week ago because day out, ten. Dan Margera, which is like two hours long, and it actually talks about why he wasn't in Jackass Four and everything. Yeah, was that, was that, 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 that was like during the COVID though, because they were still on Facetime then. But um, I watched uh like a, a little bit over well, ten days on. ago, bro. I started watching the, the Kevin Smith one. People in the van. Hold on. There was people in the van. Steve O's touring right now. Yeah. So you don't technically need to have Bam Margera in your van if you're touring. Now, but that that was there. Including, including if Bam's on probation and he's not allowed to leave the state. He says it in the beginning of the episode. He goes, "This was this was recorded a little while back, so it was during COVID that they recorded that because they were doing the FaceTime thing. Because usually he'll just drive up to you, pull up to you, and do the they probably, Steve-O probably said that so that he couldn't get in trouble with the." Jackass four writers and the legal team because Bam wasn't allowed to be in the movie and nobody was supposed to I have thought, it. I thought he wound up being in it anyway, Bam. though. He was in it anyway. He wound up being in it anyway, I thought, in a skit. Trend, no, he skit. wasn't in one part. He wrote a skit and they used it. Wow. That's I, what I pissed Bam off. I didn't I didn't see the new the new the new one yet or the half. That's one what that, that is what pissed Bam off. They he he wrote a couple of sketches before they said he couldn't be in it. And they used one of his sketches and he got really pissed off. And it was a sketch that he was supposed to be in, and they wouldn't, and since he couldn't be in the movie, they did it without him, and he ended up suing Jeff Jermaine. Yeah, I mean, anyway, either way, I was it was a little over 10 days ago. I was in the shower and uh, I started watching the Kevin Smith one, which they go into sobriety about. And it was one of my favorite episodes. And that's initially what started me on this, this train of thought to get 10 days today. And uh, anyway, also I'm watching the Patty, Patty, the baddie one before in the shower, before I called you. And I was, I, I thought we were going to do a wrestling with time today. Like I said, so I was going to save this for later, but I figure I could put it in here anyway. Him and Patty are talking and Steve O's like, I bet you there's a podcast called like Talk Shit or something like that. Cause Patty has a podcast called Pony or some shit. And he said it means like shit or whatever. So I could put the clip right here. <laughs> but uh the little shout out from Steve O. Like he's like, I bet you there's a podcast called Talk Shit. So Uh-oh, I was like, Oh, we're cutting out. It's shit to talk about. Did you hear me? Yeah, I heard you. Yeah, so so you know, I was like, shit yeah. To so talk I about. think somebody should hit up Stevo on Twitter and go, hey, there's an actual show that you guys were just talking about. It's called Shit to Talk About. Here's the link. Yeah, I, I'm already I'm already gonna post this and then send this little clip to get him on like, that. We're already order. here. Oh my god, dude! Imagine if I was still in pro wrestling and you were my agent, you'd be the worst agent in the world. We're here. Who, me? Yeah, you'd be the worst agent in the world. Be like at the last second. Oh, dude, I got you a gig. It's for like 30 bucks. Why Why you say that? 
you heard about it from Steve. Oh, you know, I bet there's a uh, podcast called Shit to Talk About or something like that. You should have automatically went on Twitter and said, "Yeah, I own it. Here's the link." No, he he said I was in the shower and he said it's it, it is something called Talk Shit or something like that. Yeah, and then that's when you should have stopped the shower and been like, tweeted him, it's I a, own a show. It, it, yeah, it, I it, own a show that says it is called Shit to Talk About, so you are right. It, it, it's a couple of days ago, the Patty the Batty episode. It wasn't like it was freshly dropped today anyway, so it don't matter if I do it now or later. He's going to see this, so I'll post this clip and be like, we're here. Here, motherfucker. What? Yeah, dude. Exactly. Now watch as I watch. Now watch as I go along this tightrope with chicken up my ass and a pool full of alligators. Yeah. Well, hold on. I do want to give Buff his stuff. Buff, sir, stuff oh, a lot. Look <laughs> to get any LGBTQ AAIP plus friendly merchandise. You can go to buffbagwell.com and you can get anything that you want. And Buff, still to this day, is running this special that is a special Oreo called Triple Buff Stuff is, Oreo. Does he still got those shirts it's up? Bigger, then a regular Oreo and all proceeds from this exclusive Oreo goes to any LGBTQ AAIP plus endorsement, community thing, whatever it is, Buff will donate 30% of it to it so he can use the other 70 to keep giving you these awesome cookies. They come in chocolate, they come in white cream and they come in rainbow unicorn farts and banana so nut pudding. Triple buff stuff Oreos, three times bigger than a double stuff, and it's got two cookies: one on the top, one on the bottom. And no joke, it's probably like that thick. So go get yourself some triple buff stuff Oreos today. Woo! I'm gonna put a buff intro right here, though. And the stuff and the girls just can't get enough. But this shout out goes to the guys over at Stab doing their thing and talking smack and always, always have some random shit to be talking about. Brought to you by Mr. WWT himself, Time Warp, and the Tree WO Road Star, aka the short fat man in a wheelchair, who wishes he ran my Twitter. But, keep wrestling with time, because time is for life. Buff Daddy is out, and also remember though, that Buff Daddy probably banged one of your moms. <laughs> I am out now. Peace. That would have been our introduction. That would have been our introduction when his old manager was running it. That other guy, I forget, the guy that robbed me from my $150 Buff the Bagwell airbrushed hat that never sent me my airbrushed hat. The guy that's no longer running his Twitter. It's no longer the fat guy in a little wheelchair, man, that's running Buff Bagwell's Twitter, bro. Should have been you all along, man. He called the fraud in. He got the fake sting, man. He got the it's fake that. stinger, man. The one that doesn't even come down from the rafters that wears the plastic mask over his face. That's not even real paint, bro. If it wasn't for the fact that Conrad Thompson, a fucking fat Southern boy, could get in touch with one fucking wrestler or one main guy in professional wrestling and start one of the biggest wrestling podcasts. Technically, he is the one who started the wrestling podcast. It's his network or something. Um... He got in touch with Bruce Pritchard, and Bruce Pritchard, he, that was Conrad's opening door. Now, Conrad has got 83 weeks with Eric Bischoff. He's got something to wrestle with with Bruce Pritchard. He's got fucking, woo, the Nature Boy, Ric Flair's podcast. And that, uh, ironically, that's his father-in-law, so good for him. Uh, what else? Um, he also now does the podcast with... Uh, Oh, you didn't know? The he now does a new door. podcast with Road Dog Jesse James. That's good. Good to know. And he also does a podcast with Jeff Jarrett, My World. Motherfucker's got 
five fucking professional wrestlers under his fucking ring, uh, under his hand, dude. He's like the Tom Brady of fucking God. You know, like he's like, he's literally the Tom Brady of the fucking podcast world for wrestling. I'm pretty he's sure. He's got five fucking guys, which means that's five fucking rings. He manages also, yeah. though, uh, the click this. Like it's through his, his website, even though Sean runs it or Sean hosts it. It's on Conrad's website, the no ad for ad free show. Yeah, but I com. don't. Yeah, but I'm I'm talking about him doing the con. You know, him yeah, doing yeah, actually the interviewing it. Important. Yeah, who else does oh, he do? Does also, also, if I'm not mistaken, isn't he doing Foley's pod? Also, isn't he the fucking host of Foley's pod? Dude, I heard about Foley's podcast on Click This. Because Nash it's was like, Foley's Foley a cool guy, pod. good storyteller and shit like that. But I haven't even heard Foley's podcast yet. I don't, I, I've, I've, I've watched like two minutes of it, but I don't remember if, because it was just a two minute clip. I don't remember if Conrad is the guy who's doing the podcast with him. Yeah, I, I would more than likely have to say that he probably is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Nick, what's at your house? You know, I'm a wrestling guy. I would have done it for fucking free. All you had to do was give me a t-shirt to brand the pod. Only by the time we get merchandise, I would have just want 5% of just whatever I had. The fat little short guy in a wheelchair that runs Buff Bagwell t-shirts, is that too hard to ask? I mean... Is it that hard to guess to get a retro 1998 D-Generation X suck it fucking football jersey? Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. Those things were fucking huge, dude. Fucking X-Pac used yeah. to come down the ring with a triple X fucking shirt. The thing <clears throat> was bigger than Ewa. Yeah, I, I wanted to buy one retro recently to go along with my Stone Cold vest. Did I wear my Stone Cold vest on a podcast yet? I think you have like twice. I did. Well, I, I wore my regular vest, I know, one time when I did the beer bash back in the day, but I don't... <clears throat> I, I don't think know. you also wore it at WrestleMania 38 when Stone Cold came out and you fucking threw a beer bash on your couch and you pissed your mom off. I don't know if I wore the... Uh, did I wear the vest in that video? I didn't even know if I had the vest in that video. You, said you, were, you were fucking screaming and everything. You pissed her off. You spilled beer all over the place and yeah. she got really upset. Yeah, no, I know. I just don't know. I don't remember when I got it in the mail. I fairly got it fairly recently. <laughs> When you do a beer yeah. bash and your mom gets mad at you. Yeah, one of them got a, had a piss mom off, 90s kid edition. Yep. I mean. Oh, all over the couch, all over the floor. It's I all wish, over the place. Yeah, I wish the lighting was a little bit better in the house at that time, but it was like pitch black. I was drunk, bro. What the fuck you expect? <laughs> I didn't have like those fucking like lights. Like, hold up, let me get this light set up. Then she would have been like, what the fuck are you doing anyway? You're taking a video? Like, yeah, I'm taking a video. Like, I tried to make it discreet. It like, probably would have been more okay if you told her you were doing a video. It wouldn't have been as funny then, because then she would have just been like, okay. The funny part was the reaction of, no, you fucking all asshole. You <laughs> all you would have had to say was, shut up, I'm doing a video. And she would have been like, all right, then you do it. And then you still would have gotten the same reaction, because you didn't tell her what you were doing. You just said, I'm just making a video. Well, she wouldn't have wanted to have been, she wouldn't have wanted to have been in the video in the first place. She would have moved her way out of the video. So that would have ruined it off the rip. Cause then she would have just, you would have just heard her from the side, but you wouldn't have seen her reaction of her getting up like you asshole. Cause like the beer splashed her when the cans cracked, <laughs> it splashed. And then it started to run everywhere. <laughs> oh man. I don't know if you followed my new TikTok, my drunk documentary one yet. But uh, that's going to be all my drunk videos are going to go on there eventually. It's going to be the storytelling of the past. Seven, oh, in other news, Dr. Fauci is going to retire in December. But fear not, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Fauci from his garage will not be retiring. I will still be bringing you this. I'll still be bringing you the science no matter how long it takes in order to clear the world of all this bullshit. He will be on Twitter and he will be where else? Follow me on Twitter at Fauci's Garage. You're going to be on Fauci's Garage, from his garage, just Fauci Garage. And also, you can follow him on Truth Social. Truth Social, right? You got on there. You can follow me on Twitter at Fauci's Garage, TikTok at Dr. Fauci from his garage, and True Social at I think it's just TJ uh, Roden. Actually, I don't remember. I, yeah. TJ Roden. R-O-D-E-N. 
they wouldn't allow me to do Fauci's garage on there. I don't understand why. No, they would, but you need to put literally in your bio, you need to put this is a parody account. I did, and it wouldn't allow me. Because I did Vince McMahon right after, the, like right before the scandal or right during the scandal. And then I got like, dude, I had like 12, 13, maybe 20 followers. I don't even know how many I had. It wasn't even a big significant amount. And they already caught on. They were like, this, you're, you're impersonating somebody online that goes against our violations, this, that, the third. If you're a parody account, make sure you state that in your bio by writing not Vince McMahon. This is a parody account only. And I was like, Jesus, Jesus, I mean, whoa, Twitter, hold up. Do it. It's like, they because really want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the, the truth. Bio. So help me God, by God. I put it in the bio on Twitter. This is a parody account of Dr. Anthony Fauci. But it's ironic that Dr. Fauci from his garage caught on pretty quick on TikTok because TikTok doesn't ask if you're a parody or not. They don't give a shit. Thanks they, they to just China. Want data. They just want your fucking data. Thank you, Chinese. Thank you, the CCP. They just want your fucking data. They don't give a shit. But um, I, don't I, did, I did one video saying that Dr. Fauci's coming to work for the CCP. I got over 1.3 thousand views. I got, I got on, on, it's, it's weird because I upload some videos to YouTube, some videos to Instagram, some videos to TikTok. Sometimes TikTok will get like three or four K or whatever. And then like YouTube will get like 200. <laughs> Dr. Fauci hasn't uploaded a video TikTok in a while. It's, uh, I've been a little quiet, but, uh, my, uh, I did go on Twitter. My mom and dad I did smoking go on Twitter one. and I trolled the internet on Twitter as Dr. Fauci from his garage saying, if you don't think that Dr. Fauci is a Trump supporter, well, then why is he at PA at the Trump 2024 Save America rally? Who knows? Ooh. The world will find out. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I tweeted that to Dave Landau also. I was like, yo, Twitter, the bestie. Guess where Dr. Fauci was this weekend? And I sent him the video. And he was like, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. I, I put a video on YouTube that got like seven point something K views. And it was like, mom, when, you're when you find this in your child's drawer, and it was like weed, you threw it in the fire. And then I pretended dad, like, hold up. And it got like. Like I was getting the second hand high and then I, I've seen that video. Yeah, I saw TikTok that video. or Instagram, one of them removed it and they were like, this is inappropriate. You're, you're, you're condoning illegal use or whatever this, that's the third. And I'm like the person that put it, I think it was TikTok took it down. I was like the person that put it on TikTok originally of the mom burning the weed got like 7 million views. And then I put it up. The thing, you're sitting there inhaling it and by China, they don't allow you to who, smoke weed. Who even knows I'm United. inhaling it, bro. It's a fucking campfire. I was over making a joke. It's not you're like inhaling, you it. You're doing this and you're fucking inhaling it. Motherfuckers are going on there fucking vaping weed and with their little fucking vape sticks and pens and shit and fake cigarettes and shit. They're not sitting there like <sighs> blowing smoke rings and shit. Come on, get the fuck out of here with that shit, bro. What is this fucking 1976? It's a new age, kid. We're no longer PG era, man. This is the reason why that we can smoke weed on this channel is because YouTube will allow it and Spotify doesn't give a shit. Well, Spotify Joe don't Rogan even fucking see us. His anyway. channel also. Spot uh, Spotify don't even fucking see us anyway, so fuck it. Well, no, you can download the videos to Spotify like Joe does. Yeah, well, I think... Uh... I think we could probably get videos. You have the option there, to listen to it audio wise, or you have the or you have the option to watch the whole fucking thing. Yeah, I think I think um, <coughs> Spotify might, might allows you to do that. There. Yeah, we might be able to get on there now. Is that I don't know. I gotta see. I think I think they allow that feature now, but we took such a long hiatus that I never really looked further into it. But remember, you could go click some of the links below and get some merchandise, and also support us with our other sponsors been a while so i need to get Rich back on top of brings shit. me to the greatest sponsor of this show hello everyone this is gilbert godfrey He's need to back. tell you something about a big oral crisis today did you know over 40 percent of males still use liquid detergent soap to take a shower well you're in luck because your balls will thank you after you buy Dr. Squatch's soap. It's the best soap in the world in order to clean your balls and your asshole. I remember using it one time and it made me feel like the parrot from Aladdin once again. 
So go out and get yourself some Dr. Squatch's soap. And remember, you're not a dish, you're a man. Now wash your balls. Wash those sweaty balls, man. But, um, I mean, did you have anything else you want to add to this? This was kind of just a return episode back in the groove. Like I said, I wasn't really ready for stabs, so I didn't come with like a list of talking points and things we was going to touch on. Why didn't you have a list of talking points? You should have known that governor was going to be here. So now you're going to have to answer my questions. But if you want, we could. Where were you when the towers went down on September 11th? I was in fifth grade playing the stock market video game in Mr. Weinstein's class at Winona Elementary School. And then the kids were getting pulled out of class one by one. I was a former Navy SEAL. I was a frogman in the Navy. I used to swim the Gulf of Tonkin with Bob Backlund after we would smoke LSD and see little gray clockwork elves. The seal and then also, turn. we ended up having an hour match at the Philadelphia Spectrum that went to a draw. The seal road to a Badabad. I'd have a silo full of tortillas that could survive a nuclear holocaust and over 115,000 gallons of potable water. Men with green faces. I think there was a chap. We have to paint our faces green in order to get away from the enemy. That's what they used to do, if you didn't know. The birth of the Joint Special Operations Command in SEAL Target Geronimo. I don't know nothing about the special joint operations. You see, back in 1962, there was a thing called Vietnam about to happen, right? And so this is what they had to do. They had to create a secret division of the Army and the Navy. It ended up being called the Navy SEALs. <laughs> what a Navy SEAL is, they're the guys who killed Barack Hussein Obama. I'm sorry, Bin Laden. Yeah, like this book right here. It is the inside story of a mission to kill Osama <laughs> Bin Laden. Sorry, Trump I made Cameron. that reference between Barack Hussein Obama and Osama Bin Laden because they're both the same fucking person. You were thinking of Saddam <laughs> Hussein. Saddam no, I said Osama Hussein. Bin Laden. I know, but I'm saying you're thinking of Hussein because his middle name is Hussein, like Hussein. Yes, yes, but but also at the same time, you can put, you could literally put fucking uh, Osama's fucking turban on him and the beard on on fucking Obama. He looks just like no, him. He does. No, he doesn't. Yeah, there's a fucking really, really good Photoshop of it. Of yeah, him a Photoshop. A fucking Photoshop. He, he just like him. You know what else is a good Photoshop? The fucking deep fakes when I'm watching Jessica Alba get fucked on Pornhub and the one with fucking uh, Angelina Jolie and all those fucking deep fakes of the celebrities. No, 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 no. Their twats Bill more. Hader. If somebody went and fucking redid. Somebody went and deep faked fucking Back to the Future, the scene where Doc Brown and Marty McFly are in the school where it's 1955 in the first movie. Mm -hmm. And they put Tom Holland on Marty McFly and Robert Downey Jr. on fucking, uh, on uh, Christopher Lloyd. Mm -hmm. Dude, they both look like they belonged in that movie. Yeah. They look like they belonged in that movie. Like, no joke, like if you're going to redo Back to the Future, you put those two motherfuckers as the main cast, the movie works. But I'm saying, I remember growing up. The movie was I would watch that fucking movie. Early internet ages, though, we'd try to find celebrity porn, dude. And, like, I would try to find, like, Trish Stratus and, like, you know, all the divas and shit getting point. And there There's was, like, Mickey some James Trish Stratus lookalikes. That's out there, but it's not Mickey James. Yeah, but I'm saying there was but some good lookalikes. There was Trish Stratus lookalikes, like the bitch with the big fake tits. And I was like, it's got to be yep. Trish. But it looked like her, but it wasn't. It was, like, some British chick. But there's some deep but fakes now that look like Ava Mendez, bro. Indeed. And, oh, my God, spot there- on. There is a porno out there with Melina. There is. Yeah, I'm sure. And that's but. real. A, a, a lot of people say that's not her. No, that's really her. That was filmed in like 03 before she was in the Diva Search in 04. Uh, there's, in 04. There's, there's ones with like Scarlett Johansson now, though. Like Ava Mendez. There's some good ones. Fucking, like I said, uh, um, I'm sure there's Jessica Beale too, but um, uh, Jennifer Aniston, there's fucking Angelina Jolie. There's a shitload of them, bro, out there now. Cameron Diaz. Uh, 
how do I know? Because I definitely was on there and I, I, I found the page with the guy that does it. And I was like, holy shit, these are good. I was like, damn. But uh, it looks just like him. It's insane. It's insane. And I heard Joe Rogan oh, talking about it recently, yeah. too. And it was shortly you after I discovered them. Fucking shit. Just go to pages fucking. Yeah, but you know what? Yeah, the thing is, it's such page. shitty quality. You can't find the real good one anymore. It's shitty quality, though. It was like they're like videotaping the screen of them watching it. Video are you watching? The one that's 37 minutes or the one that's fucking 40? I found 37, 40. They're all the same, bro. It's like parts and clips and bits and like they, they needed a real camera guy there. They needed a real videographer there. Them motherfuckers were worried about getting dick wet. I know. Matt, Even if it's homemade, self. you guys are like WWE superstars. You don't Brad set up five Matt, different cameras from five different you, angles and be like, let's get all the angles, man. Just like Instagram. It's no, got to be Brad perfect. Brad Maddox was filming it with Xavier's phone and fucking his phone. That's why the videos are shitty. Yeah. Eh, fuck it. I would have did better. I got better fucking horns on the fucking single angle camera or a holding it camera than fucking they could do but whatever they, they should have thought about it they were just thinking about getting their dick wet honestly if i was in the room with page i wouldn't be focused on fucking videotaping it i'd probably set up a tripod and be like fuck it let's just get all these different angles anyway <laughs> we'll get all the angles one way or another <laughs> but fucking all right we, we're coming up on an hour though we, we want you want to wrap it you got anything you want to say anything you want to add Nah, I think I got all my talking points out. This has been episode 15 of Stab with a bonus episode possibly coming soon. I have to review and go over and see what the original 15th episode would have been that we promised you like two and a half months ago before we took this six to eight week hiatus. But we'll go into that deeper on another time. We'll go into that deep run out, another time. Support our sponsors. The links are down below. Get yourself some merch for wrestling with time. Or stab. stab merchandise will be coming out soon as soon as we get a design going. We do, we do have but some stab merchandise cotton, right now. Go to cottontea.uk.com and get yourself some wrestling with time merch. No, it's you won't regret it. www.cottontea.com. Maybe a couple of weeks. Shipping may be a couple of weeks, but when supply chains get a little better, you should get it within two weeks time. So good. We're going to also try to look into other uh, print-on-demand services that will hopefully get that to you sooner as well. This was just something I came across that was convenient and let me create multiple stores under one account. Both of us great. already have our test merch. I, I just don't have it on me right now. It's in the house hanging up. It's so. fine. It's fine. We're going to roll into a wrestling with time, kid. So go get that shit. I'm going to go fill my water bottle up, take a piss. Let's run down this Clash of the Castle for episode 20. We'll make it fairly brief and shit, and then uh, we'll call it. All right. All right. Stab episode 15. Stay tuned for Wrestling with Time 20. We're on the way. We're coming back. Ladies and the gentlemen, this was Stabbed with the Hourglass, Tyler, and Roadstar Road in the Tree. This was Stab. Drive home safe and good night. Salute to the truth.